May 18, 2009 is a very big day in my life. Yeah. It's the day that I get sentenced to life in prison mm-hmm. when I lose my life to a jury in Dallas because of the things I did. So I, I want to also make sure everybody sure. knows right. I own all my behaviors. I right. deserve to go to prison. Right. And now I'm going. But on that day, I get back to my pod in Dallas County Jail. And, and all the other inmates I live with in this pod, they're all staring at me. My, my, my trial was very high profile. It was on TV every day, one of those courtroom dramas. Everybody knows I got life. And, I mean, everybody's just staring at me, Kim. No one will come near me. I think they're afraid they're going to catch a life sentence, right? <laughs> this guy's contagious. Right, right. So if I get too close to him, and, uh, man, all I want to do is cry. You, but you can't cry in that environment. You, you can't. So oh. I have this stone face, and I'm walking through. The only place you can cry in a jail or in a prison is in the shower because nobody can tell you've been crying, right? The, you're right. coming out of the – it's a wet environment. Your eyes are watery anyway. So I go to my bunk, and I get my shower stuff, my shower shoes, my other pair of boxers, my soap and my shampoo and towel, and I go to the showers, turn the shower water on. Shower water hits me, and the tears just start coming. It's just water where I start crying. I, I'm bawling. And I'm talking to Jesus. I'm like, man, I'm I'm lost. I don't know what to do. Mm. I'm sorry. Will you take me back? And, man, it's that moment right there. Jesus is talking to me in the shower. Come on, Damon. Get on my back. Let's go. I got you. Right. There was no admonishment. No, like, you didn't listen to me. You didn't do what I said. That's how it is with the power of Christ, man. Right. You just got to yes. say, hey, man, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm yeah. ready to go. And he's ready. He's waiting for yes. you. That's the thing about Christ. He's always waiting for you. You know, some people, people will say, like, well, you, someone found God when they were in prison. Man, God's not hiding. Right. You know? <laughs> Where did you find him? Under your bunk? Isn't that true? You're the one that's been hiding. Yeah. And I'd been hiding from Christ all those years. When you live in your addiction, you can't worship two masters, mm. you know? And yeah. your master is the drug. That's the thing about addiction, man. Most addicts that I've met, people, they're uh, most addicts that I've met, Kim, they're not bad people. They're sick people that do bad things in their pursuit of their high. And I, you know what? I'm, I, I agree with it, but I, I, I want to reframe that. Just to, and tell sure. me what you think of this. They're not bad people. They're people who think that they're bad. Yeah. Based on what you told me. Well, they've done bad things. They have. Yeah. And, and so have I. Yeah. But, but there, there, there's a difference between me uh, and, and an addict in the sense of we've all done bad things, but they think they're bad. Sure. It becomes their identity. The shame is what you're, I'm coming back to you say, I, shame. it's very powerful. I've never uh, heard it shared that way, um, that we're all one bad moment from becoming an addict. Yeah. And, and, and when I, again, like I go back to the definition of addiction, it's not just drugs and alcohol. No, this is anything. that's like, exactly so right. People cope in different ways with hey, their shame. People are sh- addicted to shopping. Yeah. People gambling. salve their wounds with, with debt, yeah, with credit cards or gambling. To yeah. your point, those you, those packages coming in from Amazon all the time. You know, it, there's people go watching these these yeah. these shopping shows all day long and shopping. Man, they yeah. that feeds their brain. They get the they get a, they get the rush from that. Man, they get the balance. It's a loss of value. That's a loss of value. It's that's a good way to put it. And when you make the apologies that you have to make in a program recovery, the ninth step for us in AA. When you make the apology, here's two things that apologies do in life, and someone out there needs to hear this. When I make an apology to someone I've harmed, and I have to, this is at the end of the day, I'll tell you what I do, what ritual is, but I've got to make apologies. I can't live, because if I carry that around, that can become a resentment at me. Yeah. You know, I can resent myself for the things I did. But the apology does two things. First, it's going to free the other person of what you did to them. That's the most important thing because they didn't deserve whatever it was you did. Right. Let them go. Set them free. Right. Make the apology. But here's the thing about apology. An apology has a period at the end of I'm sorry. There's no comma, but. Mm-hmm. Now, now you're justifying what you did. It's not even an apology anymore. It's something totally different. Sure. But the apology, when made the right way, here's what you have to know. Someone you're giving an apology to doesn't have to accept your apology. That's right. That's not a part of the equation. That's right. The transaction is, I'm going to make this apology because, one, I'm going to free that person from what I did to them. Yeah. That's going to set them. Whether or not they set themselves free, I can't control that because I can only keep my side of the street clean. Right. But if I make the apology, I give them the chance to free themselves from what I did to them. Right. And it, maybe it takes longer depending on how bad the offense was. But the other thing that it does, it frees you mm-hmm. from carrying that around. Yeah. I don't have to carry that around for the person that I harmed. That's right. The shame. Yeah. It frees you from the shame. And Apologies so, are good for that's that. That's such a huge part of the value issue. Okay. 
our time. I want to get. I want to fast forward. You're in the county jail. I, I love that you shared the, the the promise to your mother, and now you're going. All right, how do I how do I survive this? And you run into a guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, this who is... drops a an unbelievable parable or a metaphor on you. Yeah, that sets you up to win. Share who's the guy, and what's the the metaphor. So to set this up, just remember. So I, the the day that they took my life from me. With the trial, with the verdict, uh, I come back to Christ. I get my life back, right? So I, I, I'm, I've given my life to Jesus, and mm-hmm. I'm walking around, and it's hard, man. I'm scared to death. I don't want to face. And this is the thing, you know. You, you know, I learned from a lady in prison that was a volunteer chaplain. She told me the secret to faith was that if you're going to pray, don't worry, mm-hmm. and if you're going to worry, don't pray. Mm-hmm. That's the secret to faith. You're going to let God do His job, or you're right. going to try to do His job for Him. I didn't know what the secret to faith was when I was in Dallas County Jail waiting to go to prison. But I did know that God can use any messenger to get through to you. And these messengers in life, they don't always look like you can. Mm -hmm. They don't come from the same background. Sure. They could be totally different. One of the biggest messengers of my life was a black Muslim man in Dallas County Jail. This guy looks nothing like me. He's from the streets of Dallas. Mm -hmm. He's a Muslim. I'm a Christian. Yeah. But he reaches out to me. He's always making sure I'm, you know, okay. He's a real positive guy. His name is Muhammad, and he shares with me one day. He said, here's how you're going to keep the promise to your mom. He said, I want you to imagine prison as a pot of boiling water, and you're going to have three choices how to respond to this pot of boiling water in life. You can be like a carrot that becomes soft in the boiling water, an egg that becomes hard, or you can be like a coffee bean, Mm. which changes the pot of boiling water into a pot of coffee. Yeah. And he said the coffee bean is the only thing that can change the water because the power was inside the coffee bean to change the atmosphere around the coffee bean. And he said, the power's inside you, just like it's inside the coffee bean. And he said, in fact, the coffee bean's the smallest of the three things, but it had so much power inside of it, it changed the world around it. Mm. And, you know, even though this guy's a Muslim and I'm a Christian, I recognize right away that the power of the coffee bean he's talking about is the power of Christ inside you. Right. It's in you. It's in all of us, you know. But we have to believe in that. We have to have faith in the, in the power of the coffee bean, the power of Christ inside of us. And so when he told me this, it was like a light bulb went off. It was like, I, I could wrap my brain around that. I've got three choices, and the choice is mine. It was empowering, Ken, because now the power was back inside me. And if I keep the power inside me, well, I wouldn't just survive prison. I could thrive inside of a prison. And uh, the last words he ever said to me, the last words he ever spoke to me on earth, be a coffee bean. Mm. And then the prison bus comes to pick me up. They, takes me, they take me off to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, and I have to go live in a supermax prison. And when you get a life sentence in Texas, they segregate you out from the rest of the prison population. They want to get escape off your mind. And so their answer to that is they take you and they put you on a building with nothing but lifers. Mm-hmm. And you have to live on the life sentence building for five years before you can come off the building. So mm-hmm. that means you don't get to go to school. You don't get a job. You don't get to leave the building. The rec yard is even on your building. Mm-hmm. So you just stay on this building, this island that's really secure with 432 people. Mm. Everybody's got life. It's the most dangerous place in the world because it's the most hopeless place in the world. Right. When there's a void of hope, yeah, darkness, negativity, evil will fill that void. That's why prisons are so dangerous. That's you? right. Because there's a lack of hope inside that place. Yep. The movie Shawshank was so powerful because the movie Shawshank is really just about hope. Yeah. Depending no on question. the perspective of the guy. If you're Andy Dufresne, you're the guy with hope. If you're Red, yeah. you have no hope. And it was Andy who poured hope back into Red. Yeah. And by the end of the movie, Red realizes hope is a good thing. Yes. Every human being has to have hope. When I walked in prison, Ken, you could smell it in the air. You could smell the hopelessness. You could smell the fear yeah. in the air. And um, prison was hard. Most yeah. hard, the hardest thing I've ever been through. Most violent thing I've ever been through. For two months, I, caught, I fought constantly. And I probably got in three dozen fights those first two months, and I lost 75% of my fights. Ken. I got my butt kicked all over prison. Right. But I won all my fights because Muhammad told me this. He said, you don't have to win all your fights, but you do have to fight all your fights. Which is such a mic drop. Oh, my God. I, 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 there's a lot of depth in that statement yes. that you have to sit in. And you don't, you don't have to win all your fights, but you do have to fight all your fights. And the idea there is, is I think that's a, a challenge to the, how to fight through adversity. Here's the expectation you most of us have head on. With, with adversity, right? Yeah. We got to take care of it. We got to win. We right. got You can't, you know, if you don't win, you lose. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's just staying, it's just f- facing adversity. He brought the expectation back down here. Yeah. Like, I just have to survive. If I can, if I just show up right. and I face my adversity, if I get knocked down and I get back up. I learned something. I don't have to win. That's it. Winning is getting back up. That's so true. That's the victory. Yeah. And that's what he's telling me. You get knocked down eight times, yeah. get up nine. 
Yeah. And that's all it's about. And that's true in life. No one counts your wins and losses. All y'all listen to this, no one no one pays attention to us that much. They don't yeah. they're not watching that closely. But they do watch to see. Everybody watches to see does he or she get back up when adversity hits. And let right. me tell you something. In life, what I've learned, you just get back up. Yeah. You just keep going. We're gonna get to the rest of the story, folks, I promise, because it's a fabulous <laughs> ending. However, um I, I heard you just recently minutes before we started this conversation you spoke to our entire team and i heard you describe just like you did the audience the metaphor of the coffee bean and and i immediately started just kind of going a little deeper into it and i'm sitting there thinking about it the power of the coffee bean is that when it's in the boiling water what happens to the bean itself the, the bean releases the energy yeah from but, within but it. why because the boiling water breaks it completely down, yes? Right. And it can't do its job till the water gets the hottest. That's the point. It so can't, I've never actually seen it, but I'm, I'm sitting here going, I'm assuming that you put a, a one coffee bean in a pot of boiling water, the boiling water breaks it down completely to liquid, yes? Right, right. All right, so this is where I'm going with this. This was like, I'm sitting there what, listening to you, and I'm going, that's the beauty of it. It's not just that the coffee bean has inside of it the power to change the water into coffee. It's it that's part of it. That's the influence piece. But it is that only by being put into the extreme boiling water and it gets completely broken down, does it have the power to influence? Same. That's what I I was like. So the trials you, you, you grabbed you, it. You started off with adversity. That's adversity. The coffee bean responds to adversity differently by going, adversity in life is gonna break me down. Divorce, bankruptcy, disease, I mean, you name the crap of life. But when we allow it to, when it breaks us down, we allow it to do something with us. That when we're completely broken down, we still have the ability to influence. It transforms us. It's the transforming power of adversity. It's the agent of change. Yeah, I was sitting there going... And Oh, so that's... you grabbed it. You understand. So this is the, yeah, the thing. bean completely dissolves. Yeah, but in doing so, it be- it becomes the water becomes coffee. It's, it's, it's it changes really... the entire environment, and that's what happened in my life. And I and I tell people, you know, I don't, you know, I don't always go down the faith road, but let's talk about that. Oh, I, we have no problem talking. about I it. I think that, you know, when when God God shows that He's real by taking people's lives and doing that in their life. That's how we know God's real, man. God doesn't set bushes on fire. That's Old Testament. Yeah. He sets people on fire. Right. And whenever this SWAT team comes in, the trial goes on, the, you know, the life sentence, God is breaking me down. When, without question. Destroying everything that was before me, everything yeah. that I yeah. was about, all these different, you know, different things I worship, sports, drugs, you know, women, all this other stuff, the vices in life that I'm going after breaks all that down. There's Mm -hmm. nothing left of the old person Mm -hmm. and builds me back up Mm -hmm. because I have to have the faith to build back up, right? And that's what's happening slowly inside this prison. Mm -hmm. I'm turning this prison, this maximum security prison, into a pot of coffee. And, you know, when I'm transforming this prison, it's me using the power of the coffee bean. Things like smiling everywhere I go because, you know, Muhammad told me, he said, you either infect a room when you walk into it or you affect the room. Right. You're the disease, you're the cure, right? So I'm using the power of my, my facial expression to change the energy around me. But one of the main things I'm doing that transforms the prison is I'm restoring hope. I'm Andy Dufresne, right? How are you doing it besides the smile? Man, guys, like one of the things I learned in life, the secret to life is servant leadership. Mm-hmm. I've got to find a way to serve when I'm inside this prison. When I get into recovery, especially in prison, I get into this AA group. I learned that I have to serve to be great. Yeah. And so I'm finding ways to serve. And, you know, I can't take you to college classes, but I've been to college. I'm in a, a, a rare group of people inside of a state prison that has this, you know, unique educational background. There weren't a lot of guys with bachelor's degrees in prison. Weren't a lot of guys. There was nobody else that worked in Congress, worked on Wall Street, right? Sure. So I could teach guys how to read, how to write. I would hold class inside of a prison cell that... You know, we couldn't leave our cell to go do anything, but I had groups of guys that would come to me to teach them how to read and how to write. The humility it took for a grown man that's 56 years old right. to ask me, can you teach me how to read so I could take the GED test one day and I could be a better man for my family. Wow. Restoring hope. Guys, I would notice this in the day room. 
when the stock market report would come on in the news. You know, it comes on the news all the time at the end. You know, yeah. middle towards the end, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, sure. the S&P 500. I noticed the news is big in there. Everybody watched the news because that's our connection to the free world. So the news, everybody's locked in watching the TV. But when the stock report would come on, everybody would kind of put their head in the ground. They kind of kick their kick the ground a little bit. And it dawned on me, man, these guys don't know what, what's, what they're talking about. So I, I went up one day while the stock report's going on. I'm like, do y'all know what they're talking about? And there were guys in there like, oh, you trying to make fun of us now? No, but I can teach you what that is. Mm. I can empower you with the knowledge of what they're talking about. So I started teaching guys about the stock market in there, about investing money. And before you knew it, man, these guys had their own black market stock market. They were buying stuff off the commissary, soups and stamps and stuff like that. And they started their own little stock market game. These guys were empowered with knowledge. Yeah, That's the thing I had I to transfer. It. We all have something to transfer to humanity, right? Right. My job in there was to transfer hope yeah. through things that I had in life that were unique in there. And that's the thing about the quilt. We'll call it a quilt of society. When we get away from just being locked in our own selves and being being siloed and we say, hey, what do I have to offer the society around me? That's how society grows. Yeah. That's how we become a better version of ourselves. Right now, we don't have that going on a lot in society. You know, yeah. uh, Social media is actually antisocial, you know? It silos people away from being in that quilted fabric of society. It's yeah. one of the worst things ever happened to humanity. Mm. But in prison, there's no social media. Yeah, There's nothing like that. It's all these people around this little... Prison is a society that is built up of the people in there. The rules are made by the people in there. But when you have someone who comes along that shows them that they can be a better version of themselves. I said four words to people all the time in there, and it wasn't be a coffee bean. It was I believe in you. Yeah. I believe in you, man. Those four words, every human being needs to hear those four words. Yeah. But I would go around telling these men, I believe in you, man. You can do this, you know? I put the power of belief back in. I changed the way they think. Yeah. The coffee bean thing is just stuck. Yeah. And you're like, I'm going to do 